Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Our next guest created a social engagement platform that has achieved double digit month over month growth since its creation in 2016. Yes. Even though the company is backed by Silicon Valley VC funds, she has had to jump through hurdles and face <laughs> plenty of no's before achieving success. My goodness. Today she is here to give you and us advice to do the same. Yay. Please welcome the founder of the Squad app, Isa Watson. Hey. Hey. Smart. Yes. 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 And pretty. Okay. Yes. 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 Speaking of smart and pretty, you were the youngest published chemist at 19 years old. I got it. I mean, yeah. at 19, what was I? Uh, I was going to tour somewhere, but I wasn't being published. No, the chemist. <laughs> I wasn't talking about nothing. So, first, a chemist. So, how did you transition and why did you transition into the tech space? I've always been a builder. And chemistry was the first way that I started building things, building molecules, mm. building like, you know, interesting drugs. And I decided that I really wanted to be close to the impact. Science can be a little isolating, mm -hmm. and anything you're working on early is not gonna hit market for at least 20 years. Yeah. And so I said, let me go get my MBA. So mm. I went to MIT, worked on Wall Street. Let me just go MIT. Let me just go Wall Street, MIT, MIT. When I went to Wall Street for a few years and then decided that I really wanted to build something that was really powerful and meaningful and really all about community. Yeah. And so that's why I left to Star Squad. Oh my, oh my God. God. So how did you figure out though exactly what kind of app to build? Like, mm -hmm. Because like you say, you're a builder and you're clearly creative. So how yeah. did you pinpoint this is the app I'm gonna do? I think it started with my family. You know, my parents, I used to always joke that my house was the community center of Chapel Hill, North Carolina, because <laughs> everyone was always there. Mm -hmm. But the impact that I saw my parents have on people long term by creating and cultivating that community mm -hmm. was something that was so inspiring to me. Um, and so with Squad, the idea is to get people together in real life. We're spending so much time on social media mm -hmm. and we're becoming so lonely and so in our own thoughts. Wow. And so the Squad app actually uses digital you know, digital platforms in our app to bring people together in real life to do things. Wow. That is so that is fantastic. Awesome. But I'm sure in the in the tech space, in the app space, you got a lot of no's, a oh, lot yeah. of rejections. Tell, talk to us about how we overcome those no's. Mm -hmm. I think that, you know, first of all, being a founder is just so strife with so much rejection. Whether it's investors, people, most people aren't gonna believe in your idea. At the beginning, they're gonna make you think you're crazy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, whether it was customers or investors, I was very systematic about charting the path and figuring out like how to get to the next step. Yeah. Mm. And so, when I, you know, whether it was sales for you know customers or you know investors, I was I built a system to track all the no's that I got. Mm -hmm. And we call them objections. So why did someone say no? Okay. Mm -hmm. And over time, you'll start to see trends. Like when I was pitching in Silicon Valley, the first objection I got was, your market isn't big enough, your market is so small. My investors were like, well, that's not true, you're not telling the story right. Mm. So then I changed how I told the story and then I never got that rejection wow. again, right? Wow. So you learned from every rejection. rejection. You didn't just take a no, you, right. you were very methodical as to why the no even came. Exactly. Yeah. Message. Yes. 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 <laughs> you life. But you, you had, you documented 320 no's oh my gosh. before you got to your first five. Yes, yes. Mm. one of the first were, was Walmart.com. Mm -hmm. So tell us about that story. So in a prior life in Squad, we did build enterprise software for companies to cultivate community among their employees. Now we're just on the consumer side, but at some point we, we were in the enterprise side. And so, you know, I was actually pitching a number of companies to use Squad to cultivate community, you know, reduce turnover, all that jazz. And I think I just, I was just going so hard, so hard, so hard that I didn't even know I had 320 no's until my HubSpot subscription was about to expire. Oh, wow. And so, um, essentially, it was the same thing. It was being systematic. Why were they saying no? Was it budget reason? Mm -hmm. Was it whatever else reason? But essentially, um, it did take 320 pitch meetings to get the first wow. five customers. My goodness. Wow. My goodness. Here's what I want to know, because people don't really focus enough on rejection being a blessing. Yeah. So 
if you can specifically or just give some type, you know, give us some tips as to how you use these rejections specifically to change how you pitch. It's kind of like that one, mm -hmm. the one you described, but like some other ones so that some of the entrepreneurs that are out here watching, even myself, I want to know what are some of the things that you can do to kind of change that frown into a smile. <laughs> nice. I think it's a few things. One is who's your audience? Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we're pitching, you know, we're, we're pitching to the wrong audience oftentimes. Yeah. And so in, with, in founder life, a lot of times you're trying to build credibility by getting the best biggest customer possible. Mm. But sometimes that's not the best early customer. Right. Ha, ha. right? And as a startup, you're looking to partner with the big brands. But maybe those aren't the best brands to partner with. And so I think that the first thing is understanding who your audience is mm -hmm. and what you can, how you can kind of create like really, you know, strong synergies. Um, and the other thing is around, you know, being really systematic. When I was pitching on the founder side, on the investor side, there's some things where, um, you know, there were some things rejections I got that were outside of my control. Mm -hmm. People sometimes still come by would be like, we just don't think that you're the person. Mm -hmm. Wow. And I'm like, wow. well, there's nothing yes. I can do about that. Right. So I'm gonna just kind of pick up my face and like go in about my business. Mm -hmm. And so I think that um, it is about taking the feedback, but it's also about really understanding like when to let go yeah. and making sure you're pitching the right people. Yeah. yeah. What if that customer that you're selling to is wavering? Because you got to know the personality of your customer. I know the personalities of my followers on Instagram. Mm -hmm. I know what they like, I know what they don't like, but what about that person that wavers, that mm -hmm. audience member what do you or whatever? Do sway them on yeah. one, yeah. Find what creates a sense of urgency for them. Ha. Mm. So is it, why are they wavering? Is it budget? Is it that, you know, it doesn't really seem important enough? Mm -hmm. Like, I'd find out what their priorities are and fit into those priorities. So some people may be getting measured on certain things coming up. And you're like, well, you know, this will actually help you achieve your goals by X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. And so you have to find out what's on people's path in front of them. Mm -hmm. And you have to, like, fit into that path. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I'm, I'm a restaurateur and an entrepreneur, and sometimes people are like, oh, what'd you do last night? I didn't do anything because I'm busy working. You know, and sometimes it can be very, very isolating. Mm -hmm. So what do you say to that, uh, that other business owner, that other entrepreneur who feels the same way? I, being a founder is both very fulfilling and it's also very lonely. Yes. And it can be both of those things, and that's okay. But I found that surrounding myself with being really picky about the energy I put myself around, <laughs> being really picky about the energy I surrounded myself with yeah. was so important. Yeah. Not everyone is meant for every single journey right. that you oh, have on your real life. Talk. And mm -hmm. that is the absolute smart truth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Because, you know, my mom always said you can't take everybody with you. No, everybody right. is not supposed to go in that basket that you travel everybody with. Everybody don't have tickets. It's not going riding though. It's just yeah. not. Yeah. yeah. They don't have a ticket to ride. They yes. don't. Right. They don't have tickets. Yes. They can't afford them. And it's okay to be picky. Yeah. know yeah. oh, that's right. So for people who are like me, because I've always like, well, somebody's like, well, you should try to do an app or something. But how do you find something that is fulfilling a need in your, in your opinion? How, mm, how do you mm. find that? A lot of times you feel it. Right. And so I started to even feel a bit more lonely in the world of social media where I have, you know, followers, but they're like not really my friends. Um, and then <laughs> and then you start to hear a lot of things. And it's also like, what are you passionate about? Yeah. Like, I think, you know, no matter how much we advance in technology, there's nothing that replaces this. Right? There's nothing yeah, that replaces nothing. that. Yeah. We will always be humans and we'll always need to connect. And so for me, that was something I became very passionate about. And I, so I think it's a matter of where do you feel like you can actually add some domain expertise? Where do you feel like, you know, you have some passion around it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then just kind of validate that it's a need. It's so easy to test things. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when people want to start something, they're like, okay, now I need $5 million. Actually, you probably need $20 mm -hmm. to run a survey, or you probably need $50 to do that. And so there's so many ways that you can kind of test and be iterative mm -hmm. to build the right thing. Wow, my goodness. Well, we're so very proud of you for yes. doing what Thank you do. You. It's such a great thing. <laughs> yes. The Squad app. Girl, you yeah. do it. Oh, we're so proud of you. Yeah. <laughs> we see you, sis. We see you. So be sure to go to uh, with your squad.com to find out how you can become a member. I said thank you so much. Yes, yes. 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 yes